Welcome back to Creative Tian channel. This is part two of the machine knitting kit sweater on Brother 260 knitting machine. And we are using the cut and sew technique. So last time we need the basic panels. That's a rectangle for front and back and two rectangle for sleeves. And today we are going to cut all the curves so the first thing is to find the pattern. You can refer to the clothes that fits and measure the neck opening and all the curves from that. Or you can search online and find free sewing patterns and print it out and use that as a guide. And you can adjust from that. I found a free t-shirt sewing pattern online. I will link it in the description below. And that's a good reference for the shape. So I know I'm not too much off. And I'm just using the copy paper, draw the line and cut it out. Use that as a template to draw on my fabric. And I like to use a disappearing ink pen for the fabric. So it works like a marker. And after about one day, the ink will disappear and will not leave any mark. So this is the front piece and back piece. And here is the sleeve pattern. It's basically a curve like that shape. Last time we placed the mark when we need up to the point that's below the sleeves. So we know here we will start the curve. That's why we place the pattern like that and draw the line. And for the front and back, I know I have about eight inches from the ribbon or mark ribbon to the underarm. So that's eight inches. And from there, we will start using the pattern. This one is the back side, so it will look like that. Now we have all the pieces marked. The next thing I'm going to use my serger and uh, cut and sew at the same time to finish the edge. If you don't have a serger, you can just sew with a standard sewing machine and uh, sew along the line. And you can go over twice and you can cut a little bit outside of this line. And if you use the sewing machine, because it's not very flexible after you sew it up, you might want to make the curve a little bit bigger to make sure it will fit over the head. Another way to use sewing machine and still have flexible edge is to use a zigzag stitch. Use a small zigzag stitch can help the fabric more stretchy. The only place we really need a stretchy stitch is around the neckline and maybe here, the opening of the sleeves. For the shoulder, we don't want any stretchiness. So after I search everything, when I attach the shoulder line, I will go over it with a straight stitch on a regular sewing machine. That will be more sturdy and I don't have to worry about stretching out of shape. And that will be the same with side seams. For the side seam, you can also sew it by hand, but it's faster to sew it on a machine. This is my serger, a very basic brother model. It's not very expensive. It's nice to have a serger if you sew a lot of stretchy material. Now I'm just going to sew up all the curved lines. I'll start from the sleeve piece going here. and try not to stretch it too much to avoid the waving line. So that's the sleeve curve. It's finished and cut at the same time. And we'll continue going for all the pieces. 
When I need to make a 90 degree curve, I just finish the straight line first and leave a tail and then we'll start over from here because it's very difficult to have a sharp angle with a serger. That's after sewing up with a serger. And the next I'm going to connect one side of the shoulder so we have it with right side facing and I will just sew it up here with a regular sewing machine because I want it very sturdy so just a simple straight stitch and you can even go over twice and then we can do the neck next. I saw a few lines from the back side just a straight stitch so it becomes sturdy and you will not stretch out of shape easily. Next we want to knit up the neck band and this is the one shoulder joint we just made. We are going to hand it back to the machine. This will be the neck curve line and this is the shoulder line. So from here to here we are going to hand it back and we just try to place it back to the neater as evenly as possible without too much stretching. That's after hanging and I'm going to knit one row with a slightly bigger tension. Now I'm going to transfer stitches to the reaper every other needle so I can start doing the ribbing. And make sure your pitch is to the full pitch and not half pitch. For the one by one ribbing, I like to have the end needle on my knitter. So for the knitter, I have a number of stitches. If you don't, you can decrease one stitch first and later you can increase it back after you're done. So the second stitch, transfer down. That's after transferring all the stitches. Now we have to decide the tension because it's for the neck band, it will be much smaller tension than the main tension. So my main tension is number seven and I'm going to use number four and three for my neck band. And I will start with number four for three rows and then number three for three rows. And I will have a turning row. That's my main tension, number seven. And then I will need three rows of tension three and then three rows of tension four. So my total row count is six on each side plus one turning row. That's 13 rows. So I change the tension to number four first and then make it tighter. Tension four for three rows. And change to tension three. And then one row of tension seven. Now we are going to reverse that and starting with three rows of tension three and then three rows of tension four. I'm going to transfer all the stitches back to the needle and knit one row. And then knit a few rows of waist yarn and take it off the machine. And remember to change back the connecting arm to the knitter so we can knead the row properly. I will knead the row with tension seven now. Now I will just knead a few row of waist yarn and take it off machine. And I will leave a long yarn tail and cut it so I can sew up the neckline later. So 
So here is a neck pin. It will be like that. And we can fold it in half. Now we just have to sew it up to the back side and we want to cover up all the raw edges. So you can see the blue stitches at the end. That's a stitch we want to pick up and sew on below the raw edges. So pick up one stitch below the sewing line and then pick up a stitch on the other side. One stitch here, one stitch here. Now we just finished the neck band. Now we will sew the other shoulder together from the back side. And I'm going to sew this part and try to do the hand stitch for the neck band part. It will look nicer with hand stitch. So when we turn it inside out, we can find the button of the sleeve and match it up here. And also the top or the center line of the sleeve. It will look like that when you open up. And we'll just use a regular sewing machine and a straight line and sew up the top. After the sleeve, the only thing left is to sew the line under the sleeves and on the sides. And we can do it in a continuous line with a regular sewing machine and a straight stitch. And we just need to block it and it's done.